You know, there's a term in fiction called dramatic irony. Has anyone ever heard of this term before? Okay, dramatic irony. It's like when the audience is aware of something. So this is used a lot in plays. Like Shakespeare used this a lot. It's when the audience is aware of something from like the fourth wall perspective, watching the play and the different acts play out but the individual characters in the play are unaware. So, like, for example, in Romeo and Juliet, spoilers for Romeo and Juliet, uh, Romeo and Juliet die at the end of the play, right? However, the way that they die is dramatic irony, because we kind of know what the plan was, but the individual characters didn't really communicate on what the plan was at the end of Romeo and Juliet. So they both end up dying, and it's like, oh no, it was a misunderstanding! They didn't need to do that! Literary device, very handy when used properly. Now, I was thinking if there was a reverse of that, whereas instead of the audience being aware of something and the characters not, what if there's a situation where the characters of a story know more than the reader? And I believe that would still be called dramatic irony, at least I didn't find a term for the opposite. It's just from the uh, inside looking out rather than the outside looking in, okay? Here's a great example of that in One Piece, okay? So, for years and years and years in One Piece, we were completely unaware of what the Yonko's bounties were, right? Like, for years, people were theorizing, like, as soon as the Yonko were named as a group, like, what's Whitebeard's bounty? What's Shanks's bounty? Aw, oh, man, I bet Big Mom's bounty, you know? We were theorizing for years, like, oh man, they must be, like, a billion, right? And then Jack showed up, and he had a, the first one billion berry bounty. It's like, whoa! So if Jack's bounty is a billion, and he's only a Yonko commander, then, like, the Yonko bounties must be, like, five billion, right? We didn't know Roger's bounty, we didn't know anybody's bounty yet, okay? But the dramatic irony there, in kind of like a, a reverse Uno card sort of situation, is that most of the characters in the One Piece world, like, not even just the Marines and the world government officials, but like, regular civilians, would have been aware of what the Yonko bounties were. They're the emperors of all pirates. There's Their bounty posters were probably plastered in every single town, in every marine base all over the world. Every civilian just picking up the paper in the morning would probably see, oh, oh, that big mom, she's causing havoc in the new world with a bounty of over four billion. That's insane, <laughs> you know? So that's an example of in the one Piece world, people know stuff, and we're over here just like, hey, throw us a bone. Can, can I read that newspaper? Can I see what's going on over there, right? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if in the One Piece news, there's like a, a, a bounty ranking. So in the newspaper, in the World Economic Times, they have the wanted posters like slipped in. So like, here's the new bounty for Luffy or whatever. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a segment of the paper where it's like, here are the top 20 bounties of pirates in the whole world, right? And it like, like changes every week, like the numbers change and everything like that. And it's like, oh, well, Beiji was down on the bottom, but now he's rocketed up five spaces. Oh, look at Law over here. He's at three billion now. I wouldn't be surprised if that existed. And it's like, meanwhile, here are the fans. Like, we didn't find this out until like volume 95 or something. <laughs> Took us a while. But uh, yeah, so that's dramatic irony. Now, in another way of looking at this, you have Luffy. Luffy does not read the newspaper. In fact, Luffy can... Okay, Luffy can read. I was gonna say Luffy could barely read. Luffy's not that stupid. Luffy can read. It's just like with most things, if he's not interested in it, he's not going to pursue it, right? He's not going to try to bother because he's like, look, I care about sailing on the seas, you know, finding the One Piece, having a great adventure, getting into fights with giant dragons and, and mountain whales, you know? I, I, don't have, uh, I don't have time to sit down and read the newspaper or read a new novel. In fact, it's actually played for laughs a few times in filler arcs. There was one filler arc I remember, I think it was post-Alabasta, where Luffy was, like, just on the ship and there was nothing to do. Like, there were no new islands, there was no Nobody knew to fight, and Luffy's just sitting there on the Mary, just like, I'm bored. Robin, can you have a do you have a do you have a book I could read? And Luffy's like looking at it. And it was it was the books on the Rainbow Mist, because this was like the Rainbow Mist arc, you know, was getting started up. And Robin's like, oh yes, it's a fascinating book, Luffy. You should read it. It's about adventure. And Luffy's like, really? 
<laughs> you know, so they, they play that for laughs a couple times in fillers, but, you know, L Luffy can read. He just doesn't really care to read the newspaper in particular, right? But that got me thinking, dude, how different would the One Piece story go if Luffy actually kept up with the times. How many different, like, big moments in the story, big reveals to us, because a lot of times we see this from, like, Luffy's perspective, or rather the Straw Hat perspective in general, but even that is kind of like, um, kind of like, uh, myopic. Myopic, is that the word I'm thinking of? Let's use it anyway. It's kind of myopic, because, like, Robin knew a lot of this stuff, and we never were privy to that. Like, Robin, I am certain, knew what the Yonko bounties were. She knew what Shanks' bounty was, but it's not like she's gonna go up to Luffy and be like, hey, Luffy, do you want to know Shanks' bounty? <laughs> you know, so it's usually through Luffy's perspective that we see this stuff, right? So, uh, I've compiled a list here, not even complete, I didn't go, you, this is one of those things, like a huge project, honestly, where you'd have to go through, like, the entire manga, and, like, you know, volume by volume, story arc by story arc, and break down, like, would this have gone differently if Luffy would have read the paper, or would this have ended up in the paper, you know, that kind of stuff, but let's start with the simple one, this was, like, the big one that popped into my head almost immediately, if Luffy would have just read the newspaper, he would have known relatively early on that Sabo was still alive. He would have. He would have. Sabo was the second in command of the Revolutionary Army. Not even talking about his dad yet. Because honestly, even if Luffy read in the newspaper that Monkey D. Dragon was the most wanted man in the world and was the head of the Revolutionary Army, Luffy still might not have connected the dots on that one. Like, hmm, Monkey D. Dragon? Well, that guy looks weird. Okay, anyway, Sabo? <laughs> You know, Luffy still might have not have connected the dots. Monkey D. Dragon, Monkey D. Luffy. Oh, he's a monkey too. Oh, well, it was small world. There's a lot of people out there. You know, you know, it really took, I think, Garp directly telling Luffy, your dad is Dragon and he's the head of the revolutionaries for Luffy to finally realize that. And he didn't even know what Dragon looked like up until when they were heading to uh, Whole Cake to rescue Sanji. That was the first time Luffy ever saw Dragon's face. Dragon is the most wanted man in the world and probably makes the newspaper all the time and yet this is the first time Luffy's seeing his damn face so you know Luffy does not pick up the newspaper all right well anyway yeah that's Dragon though Sabo is the big one Sabo second in command chief of staff of the Revolutionary Army I don't know exactly when Sabo took up that position um you know he has that position right now after the time skip but you know he would have showed up in the paper before then he's like a rising star in the Revolutionary Army and the world government is obviously against the Revolutionary Army, so they'd be publishing stories all the time in the journal about like, oh, the revolutionaries attack this island, they're horrible people, you know, if you, if any citizen sees the revolutionaries, turn them in, right? And so Sabo and Koala and Hack and everybody, they'd be rising up through the ranks over the years, and uh, I'm sure Sabo popped in the paper a lot, but most certainly when he became the chief of staff, okay, when he became the chief of staff, that is something where he'd be in the newspaper like all the damn time, right next to Dragon, okay? And so these are the top commanders all the commanders as well, Morley, Bello Betty, Lindbergh, Karasu, Ivankov, um, they would all be in the paper at various points. Luffy could have just opened it up and saw Sabo right there and been like, oh my god, Sabo's still alive. Holy crap, that's crazy. Now, I don't know if that would have, like, altered the course of the One Piece story, like Luffy sees Sabo in the paper and instantly is like, I need to go see him, because they wouldn't have known, like, exactly where Sabo was. They didn't know where, like, Baltigo was or anything like that. But, um, you know, it, it would have been interesting. It wouldn't have been as an impactful moment at Dressrosa when Sabo reveals himself and Luffy's like, oh my god! And that's really what you gotta keep in mind here, okay? You gotta keep in mind a couple of things, right? So, there's the whole idea of seeing this through Luffy's perspective, and part of that is Luffy is kind of just um, oblivious to the media in One Piece, okay? So he doesn't keep up with this stuff. So, that makes that moment all the more special, you know, when Luffy finally reunites with Sabo, it's just like, hey, Luffy. <laughs> and it's almost like, I feel like Sabo knows Luffy's personality and is probably aware that, like, okay, there's no way he read the paper and knows I'm still alive. So this is going to be a big moment to him, probably, right? So that, it, we wouldn't have had that moment. We wouldn't have had, I mean, we we still would have, like, let's say that, that the same thing happens, like, Luffy reads the paper, he knows Sabo's still alive, but they still don't meet until Dressrosa. Luffy would have still cried. He wouldn't have expected to see Sabo right 
there in front of him at Dress Rosa, but a little bit would have been taken away from him because he's like, Sabo, I knew you were still alive because I read it in the paper like three years ago, but still, <laughs> you know, like it's been a while. How you doing, brother? <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah, it would have been a nice moment. Luffy would have still cried, but it, it wouldn't have been as emotional because we would have already known about it, okay? So, yeah, that that's the big one. That's the big one. Um, another big one is all of those different groups in the One Piece world. The Warlords, the Yonko, the Supernovas, you know, the, the Super Rookies. All of them would have been in the paper through various, you know, points in the story. Some of them would have been in, like, every issue. Like, I am sure Morgan's dedicated, like, like a Yonko section of the paper. Like, this is what the Yonko are up to this week. You know, Big Mom added a new island to Totland. Kaido got drunk, you know, and shot a Boro breath into the sky. Really cool fireworks from a distance. You know, so there's probably a section of the paper where Morgans will talk about the crazy stuff the Emperors get up to. We didn't even know the Emperors as a name until the post Ennies lobby arc. That is when Garp showed up and actually talked about them and explained the concept. Like, you know, because Luffy wanted to know what's up with Shanks, and Garp told him and just like, well, I don't really know what's up exactly with him right now, but he's one of the four greatest pirates in the entire world. And we got the silhouettes of all the Yonko. And he explains, like, the power system and, you know, the whole thing with, like, the, the three great balance powers in the world and everything and, and what the emperors really mean. And Luffy's in the background just question marks popping out of him and he just says, well, I really don't understand any of that. I'm just glad Shanks is okay. So Luffy had no idea. Luffy had no idea the emperors even were a thing. <laughs> This is, this would be common knowledge in the One Piece world, all right? This would be every civilian, if you go up to any civilian, any random person living on a farm in the West Blue and be like, who are the greatest pirates in the world? Who are the strongest pirates currently active in the world? They would say the Emperors, the Yonko, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and Shanks. That's who they are. And that's just a random radish farmer living out in the middle of Nowheresville, okay? Luffy's just like, I don't know. Um, when uh, Yosaku explained the concept of the warlords to Luffy, he had no idea. Uh, eventually, when they got to Sabaody, Shaki even kind of told Luffy, like, you really need to read the paper more. Um, and actually, that would come up to be relevant because immediately after Sabaody, when the Straw Hats all got separated and Luffy got sent to Amazon Lily, that's how Luffy found out about Ace being captured and about to be executed because Granny Neon was like, you should read the paper. And he's like, what? Ace is going to be executed? Wow. Thank you, magical newspaper print. This is incredible. I would have never have known. Um... So there's that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, that that would have been fun. Like, we could have, like, now, to be fair, Oda did not actually plan the supernovas. Like, that was something that came a little bit later. Like, that was not something intended at the beginning. I am sure Oda at the very beginning was like, okay, warlords and the emperors are going to show up at some point. It's just a matter of when in the story to fit them in properly. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know when the supernovas were created. I don't think it was like an 11th hour sort of thing. I don't think it was like, you know, right before Saba Odi, Oda was like, you know, uh, or I guess it would have been his editors was like, Oda sensei, you need to make more, <laughs> you, you need to make more characters for this story. Like, okay. And then he just like draws the supernovas really quickly, like in one night. Um, he's like, this one's going to be uh, the mafia guy, whatever this guy, this guy's going to have tarot cards or whatever. You have to keep moving. I, I think it was something maybe a little bit before that, maybe maybe prior to Thriller Bark, maybe a little bit earlier than that, maybe around that area of the story is when uh, Oda came up with the supernovas. But it would have been interesting for, you know, reading the newspaper and be like, oh, this is Eustace Captain Mid. I mean, Eustace Captain Kid, and he's out there doing stuff. Here's Trafalgar Law in the North Blue, and he's done, you know, this stuff as well, and he has the op-op fruit. It, it would have been cool, like a lot of foreshadowing to set this up for later, and then boom. Uh, that might also be another reason why Oda doesn't have Luke Luffy read the newspaper, it's so that, well, for, you know, the, the purposes of being dramatic and big reveals and things like that, but, you know, Oda might not, you know, he doesn't want to set in stone, like, this is something that's happening in the world, in the news, because then he might have to address it later, you know, and it's just like, maybe Oda's like, yeah, with the supernovas, he's like, he didn't know they were going to exist back, you know, in like the East Blue or whatever, so it wouldn't have worked, right? So all those groups, the admirals, the admirals 
and what their fruits were and what their abilities were. That would have been in the newspaper. You would have seen like, you know, Admiral Kizaru arrives at this island and puts down pirate insurgents using the Pika Pika Nomi. And right there, like this is strategic stuff. You know, like the abilities of the admirals would have probably been talked about in the newspaper. At least you could defer it from their code names at the very least. You know, but they use their abilities, right? You know, they're they're there doing that stuff. So you would know that like, you know, like everybody in the Marines knows that a Kainu can turn into magma. Everybody in the Marines knows that uh, Aokiji controls ice. So, you know, that would just be interesting info to have, especially going into Marine Ford. Like if Luffy was reading the newspaper regularly and he learned about the admirals and he knew what their individual abilities were. Once again, not how Luffy fights, though. Luffy doesn't usually like, OK, so Kizaru has the ability to manipulate light. All right. How I'm going to counter that is give him the old one, two gear third. You know, it's like, no, that's not that's not how Luffy fights. He kind of just charges in. Um, but we would have found out about it earlier. Luffy should have been able to know that. Uh, this is a big one. Vegapunk. Yep. <laughs> Once again. Now, this is something... I don't know. I don't know. Vegapunk is the greatest scientist in the entire world, and usually he's sequestered off in Egghead Island, you know, working on a bunch of random stuff, you know, crazy, crazy inventions and everything like that. But... I feel like he would have showed up in the paper a few times. I feel like every once in a while in the paper would be like, Vegapunk invents, you know, anti-gravity shoes. Vegapunk invents this robot thing. Vegapunk invents a vending machine that gives you food. You know, there would be a, probably another segment in there of like the science of the future island, you know, and just like all the crazy inventions that are coming down the pipeline that are available for purchase. You know, coming, you know, this Christmas season by the new Vega Cola machine. It produces cola at a variety of different we call it a vending machine you know um yeah so that, that he would have probably showed up in the paper like if you just saw what luffy would have read in the paper it'd be like oh who's this guy with the giant apple head you know there you go there's vegapunk right there um geography of the world that luffy was completely unaware of you gotta also understand luffy because he has the option to read the paper, right? It's not like he doesn't get the paper. The Straw Hats read the paper. Nami reads it. Robin reads it. Uh, who do you think on the Straw Hat crew reads the newspaper regularly? That's actually a good question for SBS. Nami and Robin, guaranteed. I feel like Usopp would read the paper. I feel like Usopp would read the paper. At least, like, maybe not read the whole thing, but he would, like, glance at it. I don't think Zoro would care. I don't think Frankie would really care. Um, Brooke might read the paper just because he's been isolated for 50 years in the Florian Triangle, and he's just like, oh, this information about what's happening in the world, right? Jinbei would read the paper. I feel like Jinbei would. Sanji, I'm not sure. I feel like, I feel like if Sanji, like, had the time, you know, in the morning in between making breakfast for everybody and stuff like that, if he had a free moment to, like, just have, like, a cigarette or whatever, go out on the deck, maybe he would, like, read a, an article or two in the paper. I don't think he would, like, you know, sit down and comb the whole thing. Like, I feel like Nami and Robin uh, would read the whole thing. You know, maybe Jinbei as well. He would read the whole thing, like, cover to cover sort of thing. Usopp, maybe only the articles he enjoys. Luffy, Zoro, and Frankie probably wouldn't. Chopper, I don't feel like he would either. I don't think Chopper would be interested in the paper or anything like that. Um, a lot of times they're only interested in it when there's people in the paper that they know. So if, like, Shanks makes the front page news, Luffy would be like, Aw, Shanks, I miss him. And, like, when Dr. Kareha went to the reverie, Chopper was like, Oh, Dr. Ean, I miss you. You know what I mean? Like, that, that was that. But other than that, they're not really interested here, okay? In fact, even just getting the thumbnail for this video was rather difficult difficult because like one of the very few times Luffy reads the paper it's this scene right here where he's looking at the picture of dragon and like carrots right next to him so I guess carrot ends up in the thumbnail as well which I'm not complaining about that hashtag not a furry of course look just because carrots not in the story anymore doesn't mean that she's not going to be relevant to the story yeah exactly okay you know, wait, wait for it, wait for it. That probably got an article in the paper. The Phantom Country of Zoe got a new duchess. Her name was Carrot. Okay, it was, it was in the paper somewhere, sure. But no, the geography of the world. Luffy did not know the new world existed. You know, he had to, like, like basically it was uh, Kobe and Helmeppo that had to tell him about that. Like, the second half of the Grand Line is called this. Once again, very common thing that pretty much everybody else would know, that the Grand Line is broken into paradise in the new world. Um, and, you know, Luffy loves going on an adventure, though. That's what he does, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't, like, Luffy probably doesn't want to know about all this stuff. Because it's like, it's less fun. It's like when Usopp was about to ask Rayleigh, uh, like, what the One Piece was, and Luffy, like, shut that shit down, like, immediately.
immediately. He's just like, Usopp, no, I don't want to know about the treasure. I don't even want to know if there is a treasure. I just want to go and see and have an adventure. Maybe that's why Luffy avoids the paper every now and then. Like, no news is good news kind of thing. Like, because if Luffy picks up the paper and he reads about, like, you know, oh, someone discovered the One Piece, <laughs> that would just ruin the whole experience for him, all right? Like, if Luffy reaches Laugh Tale and, like, oh, yeah, somebody showed up here a couple months ago and took it, Luffy be like, well, okay, can't win them all, I guess. At least we had a crazy adventure, guys. But if he were to read that in the paper, like, when it happened, Luffy be like, Ah, uh -huh. that like open first page news. This is what the One Piece was the whole time. This guy found it. It's just like Buggy the Clown found the One Piece. Here it is. It's like, oh, now I know what it is now. That's not fun anymore. All right, guys, let's go back to that Lightning Island. Let's go back to Raijin. Let's see if there's anything going on there. The Straw Hats just go make a U-turn on the Grand Line. They go back to Raijin. Still want to learn about that place. Um, there's a couple of arcs in the story where the newspaper would not have helped them at all. Skypea is one of those because, like, the, that's a completely separate area there. So there would have been, like, they could have read all the papers if they wanted to. None of that would have prepared them for, like, reaching Skypea and Eneru being up there. Same thing with Wano. Wano is such, such an isolated island and country. Um, that they could have read the papers. Maybe Wano would have been mentioned tangentially, you know, like every once in a while in the paper, but it wouldn't have been, there was like no intel on what's going on inside of the country. So that really wouldn't have prepared them for that. Um, but for most other locations in the world, they could have read about Dressrosa. They could have read about Eni's Lobby. They could have read about Water 7. They could have read about all these places and learned about them long before they actually reached those locations, right? But that's not as fun, you know what I mean? Um... The biggest time it becomes relevant in the story, uh, the newspaper for Luffy in particular, is, of course, Ace's execution, uh, which, you know, like, oh, I have to go to Impel Down to save him and then end up in Marine Ford in this big war. And then the post-war where Luffy does the 3D2Y message, you know, but that's not really his plan. That was more Rayleigh's idea. And it's like, let's go back and then ring the bell and then you'll get, you know, in the paper and then 3D2Y. So that was a situation where all the Straw Hats were reading the newspaper. But I think they had a vested interest in that. And in some cases, I don't think it was even them reading the paper. I think, like, in the case with uh, Zoro and Perona, I think Perona was the one that read the paper, saw Luffy in the paper doing the, you know, the 3D2Y message and, like, the hat, and she was like, hey, Zoro, check this out, okay? So I don't think all the other Straw Hats read the paper all the time, like, when they're on the ship together. But when they were separated, it made more sense because they had to kind of, like, okay, what's going on in the world right now? So, like, when Chopper was heading back, you know, news coup showed up and was like oh okay i'll buy the paper to see what's going on right so that that made more sense but when the strats are all just hanging out on the sunny just sailing i don't think all of them read the paper end to end uh, cover to cover every single day right um, let's see, what else is going on here? Uh, oh, well, even before Ace's execution, Luffy would have learned about Ace. He would have known that Ace was the second division commander of the Whitebeard crew. He would have learned about Whitebeard. He would have known that Ace has the Mara Maranomi. He would have read all of his exploits that Ace has gotten up to in the Grand Line and stuff. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know if the whole thing with Blackbeard would have been in the paper, because that was something that was more of, like, an internal thing with Whitebeard's crew. I don't know if that would have ended up there. Like, Blackbeard kills Thatch. And you know, I don't even know if they would have reported about that. Um, but uh, Luffy would have certainly read about, like, Ace. And that, not even while he was out at sea, you know? Like, Luffy, while he was still at Fusha Village training to go out to sea for those three years, when Ace left, Luffy was 14. And then Luffy didn't leave until he was 17. For those three years, if Luffy would have kept up with the paper at Mount Colbo, he would have been seeing, like, oh, look at Ace. Look at him doing all this crazy stuff. Um, I think also Dadan is... Dadan probably doesn't read the paper too often either because she was just as shocked when Sabo was confirmed to be alive. Uh, like, she didn't read that in the paper until it happened. And I, I guarantee you Sabo would have showed up in the paper before the big events at, like, Dressrosa or anything like that. Or the events later that happened with, like, uh, him being, um, him assassinating Cobra, like that big story that just broke. Sabo had to have appeared in the paper before that. Like, it makes no sense for him not to be. Like, the second he became the se uh, the uh, second in command of the revolutionaries, the second he became the chief of staff, he would have gotten his picture in the paper. Like, absolutely. Um, 
But yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much it. Like there's like like I said, if you go through the whole story, I'm sure you can point out specific moments where like, oh my god, Luffy could have read this in the paper here, and then four story arcs later, he would have known about this before it even happened. He would have known about the warlords. He would have known about Moria. He would have known about Crocodile and everybody before they actually encountered them. Um, but you know, that's not what makes a, a a good compelling story unless like Oda had every single thing planned out from the beginning, which was not the case. That's the only way this would have made sense. You know, if Oda is like, I know exactly every single character, every single person that is going to show up in this story, and when they're going to, when they are going to show up, then he could have laid this all out from the very, very beginning. But I feel like with most manga, it's it's like evolution. It's you learn as you go, and you include things later. Like the supernovas were not included at all, and then they ended up later because of an editor telling Oda, like, hey, maybe you should have some more characters in this arc, and that's how we got Law. You know what I mean? Like, Law might have not have been in the story if not for that, right? So it's a it's an evolving process. It's not like uh, just one person figures out everything. Like, Oda knows the general structure of where it's going to end, but everything else in between is stuff that just changes as the story progresses, and that's just how it goes. It turns into something that you didn't really plan on from the beginning, you know what I mean? Yeah, there it is. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a fun little scattershotted topic, but I enjoyed this. Um, moving on to the next installment of Animal Facts, the letter X. Now, a lot of people gave me a lot of interesting suggestions for this. There's the X-Ray Fish or the X-Ray Tetra, which is a pretty interesting fish. I could have maybe made a couple of episodes on that. There was also, uh, like, maybe not necessarily animal, like, actual species, but, like, families or orders or whatever, or super orders or something. There was, like, a group of, like, interesting squirrels from Africa, I think, that had, like, the X as, like, their, um, their genus or something. So people gave me a lot of interesting, you know, suggestions um, but this is what I decided to go with. Ah, yeah! Xenomorph facts! I can't pass up the Xenomorphs, right? Like, I did Porygon facts, so we've already established, you know, fictional form of life. So, if, if I'm gonna go, I could talk about some weird squirrel or an x-ray fish, or I could talk about a damn alien! I'm gonna talk about the damn aliens, okay? So, the Xenomorphs are the aliens, the eponymous alien from the Ridley Scott movie Alien and the sequel Aliens and the sequel Alien 3 and the sequel Alien Resurrection and the sequel Alien vs. Predator and the sequel Alien vs. Predator 2. I think there's a couple more actually. So here's something funny. I never saw any of the Alien movies, never watched them. I watched the first movie last night in preparation for this, and I really enjoyed it. Sigourney Weaver, fantastic as uh, as uh, Ripley in this, and I, I'm still kind of processing that movie. It was really, it, it really exceeded expectations for me in a big way. Set design was incredible, but of course, the main draw was the Xenomorph alien, all right? Th that's, that's the Xenomorph fact for today, just to introduce the Xenomorphs, and then I will go down. I'm going to go through their life cycle and watch some more of the movies. I know the second one is, I considered a lot of people like the second one is the best movie, Aliens. So I'll watch that one, and then I've heard, like, after that point, they start getting kind of crap. I feel like I do need to watch Alien vs. Predator. I have seen Predator. I saw that one already a while back, so I know that movie. So uh, maybe maybe I'll have to watch maybe Aliens, and then maybe I'll watch uh, AVP. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go and talk about Xenomorphs and Queen Xenomorphs and the, the runner things and then their life cycles from, like, egg to face hugger, chest burster to the actual Xenomorph and, and all that stuff. So uh, join me on this alien adventure, this alien excursion, this alien isolation, as it were. See you guys.